What's up guys, it's Drifts and Lifts here. All right, so today's episode, we're gonna be doing some diesel stuff. So uh, today I'm gonna be heading down to the United States of America and I'm actually going on a little bit of an adventure by myself in the Cummins here. And uh, I'm gonna be going and picking up a aluminum hood from a guy in Washington um, who's got a really cool collection of turbo diesel Volvos. Uh, so I'm gonna be heading down there and checking out his part stash and picking a few things off him. We're gonna check out his uh, collection as well. And uh, before we get going though guys, I wanted to do something kind of cool. I've always um, heard people running, you know, mechanical diesels on vegetable oil. And actually I just acquired some from my friend, a bunch of it for free, uh, some new stuff. So this isn't used vegetable oil, this is actually brand new. Um, and actually I noticed on the back of it, it says use Plotchman's vegetable oil if you're a deep frying, pan frying, cooking, salad dressings. It does not say, um, running it in your diesel truck, but uh, I think it's gonna work. I have a quarter tank of fuel in the Cummins right now So uh, I don't want to run a straight vegetable oil um, Fuel just because I've read online it can kind of dilute your oil and this kind of thing um, But just for fun right now, I'm gonna pour all this vegetable oil in the tank So I think we got 26 liters of uh, vegetable oil and we're gonna drive half an hour to the next fuel station and then I'm gonna fill the truck all the way up for the journey. Um, but I'm really curious to see how the truck runs on a 50-50 mixture of vegetable oil and diesel. It might be like a little bit more diesel. It's got about a quarter tank in there. So um, yeah, I'm really interested to see what happens. I have ran like little things like ATF and motor oil in the tank in this truck and it loved it. It didn't seem to affect anything. Um, the only thing you gotta make sure of is that your oil is nice and clean. Um, and there's no uh, moisture in the vegetable oil. But uh, when you're running new vegetable oil, you're not gonna have that problem. It's when you're gonna be doing waste vegetable oil, like a lot of people do, uh, making their own fuel basically, really cool. So that's the beauty of these trucks. But uh, all right, let's toss them in the tank and head out. All right, so final jug of vegetable oil going into the tank right now. All right, so we had a quarter tank before we started pouring the vegetable oil in. Let's see what we got now. All right, so it's actually creeping up. I think it's gonna get past a half a tank here. Um, so let's start up the truck and see if it runs any different. So, seems like it runs identical right now. Yeah, so we're just coming up on a half a tank. So we're running basically a 50-50 mix of diesel and vegetable oil right now. I'm curious to see if the truck makes any less power. I'll say right now, the smell of the exhaust is much different now. It did, because I'm on a 50-50 mix, I'm not getting like the, like the french fry smell that a lot of people say they get, but it definitely smells not as toxic. It's kind of like, not as bad, honestly. All right, guys. So we're merging onto the highway here. We'll give it a little bit of juice and see if it kind of see if it pulls just as good. That's fourth gear. And to the floor. Well, it still spins fourth in the dry, so I don't think we lost any power. <laughs> All right. So we just uh, made it across the border. One thing I want to mention is that he actually didn't ask if I was vaccinated or not, um, which I'm definitely not. But uh, so that's nice. There's no hold up at the border, a bunch of BS like that. So that was pretty cool. Um, I actually just filled the truck up with all diesel now. So it's got like only a quarter tank of uh, vegetable oil in it now. As far as drivability with the vegetable oil mix, no different. The thing literally ran the exact same. All right, so we have about three and a half hours of driving ahead of us. So uh, I filled the tank all the way up. We're gonna see what kind of fuel economy this truck gets, uh, making 600 horsepower and 1,000 foot-pounds to the tire. All right, guys, so on our way, I figured I'd make a stop at the Arlington Pick and Pull um, because I actually remembered I need a battery cable from a BMW because I'm doing a trunk 
uh, mounted battery in the blue wagon build so uh, it's a lot easier and a lot cheaper if you just get one from a pick and pull because the BMW ones already have the battery in the back uh, so you have a long cable so you don't have to buy a big uh, brand new length of cable so while we're here I figured I may as well check out a few Volvos in the yard I think there's a couple old school 240s right now so um, we'll just do a little walk around all right so uh, here's the 240 wagon that I saw on the website this thing <laughs> Seen some better days. Um, definitely needs a little bit of a buff on the paint. Looks like it was an automatic car. Um, not even too sure. I think this was like a 79 240. This one was pretty old. It's got leather seats in it. Kind of cool. Looks like the whole front end was taken off. People got most of the stuff out of here. Um, oh, there is actually a K Jet intake, which is kind of cool. All right, so in the engine bay, I actually found uh, the camshaft that was in the car, and it is a B cam. See right there, it says the B on it. So that's a, actually a kind of a decent cam. I think that's a little better than the A cam even. Um, so I might actually snag that. It's not in the greatest condition. It's got some rust on it, but I might be able to clean it up with like some, uh, you know, really light sandpaper or something like that and uh, get that off. And it might be actually usable still. So I'm going to grab that when we leave here. All right, so we got another old school 240 here. Uh, this one is also an older car and it looks like someone already did actually grab what was most likely a B cam. I think this is actually the same motor as that last 240. Um, so this is an all, also an older car as well. It's got the vented valve cover on it. So it's like a B21, I guess. Um, yeah, it's seen, seen better days, like every car in the junkyard, but uh, oh, it's also an M46 transmission. That's kind of cool. Um, you know, it might be worth taken for somebody looks like someone already got to the pedals and stuff so i'm um, wondering if this uh if this tranny's still all right it's tough to say okay so this one's a 1981 car actually and it looks like it does maybe at one point had some ipd stuff in it which is kind of cool yeah not too shabby it's got the tan uh leather interior look like so would have been a pretty sweet car at one point All right guys, so we arrived at our destination after uh, about a three and a half hour drive. Um, my truck only burned a quarter tank of fuel. So we've driven about 250 kilometers now. It's only burned just a quarter tank. So at this rate, if I can keep it going, we might get a thousand kilometers to this tank, which is really cool because the truck makes pretty good power. Um, but anyway, so uh, I got my friend Turner here and uh, this is his collection of pretty cool Volvos. So uh, we're going to take a little look at them. I'm going to be picking up an aluminum hood off him and uh, yeah, we're just going to kind of check it out. He has, these are all, or I guess three, four of them are turbo diesel which is a pretty rare thing to see in one yard. And then we got this thing. I guess this isn't turbo diesel, but I guess we'll start off with this thing. Tell us a little about your Volvos, Turner. <laughs> so I found it in, shoot, where was it? it what was, kind of car is this anyways? So uh, 1969 164. Okay, yeah. Uh, it's got 81,000 miles. I got it from a guy that wow. was so old he couldn't drive. Wow, that's low kilometers. Automatic transmission? Yeah, yeah. unfortunately, they're not that strong. <laughs> I can't say I've ever looked at one of these up close. Yeah, look at the parking brake. It's right, right oh, there. Oh, wow. Hey, look at it. <laughs> Imagine drifting with that. <laughs> <laughs> it's dirty. Everything's... Yeah, uh, but not bad. Like, the interior is actually kind of... It's, all, it's all there. The yeah. always splits in the center. And that's uh, actually pretty good Oh, dash wow. Cool. Look at these uh, dials in the middle there, hey? Yeah. That's pretty interesting. And then it's really got cool. Huh. dual side draft. Oh. Speeder goes up to 120. So, yeah, yeah. Even, I got it to 100. So. <laughs> so you're actually cruising this car around for a while. I used to daily drive it. Wow, that's so cool. Right. Yeah, sweet. Look at this. Uh, Inline six of some mm -hmm. sort. Uh, B30. B30, okay. Mm -hmm. So it's a three liter. Yep. Pretty big, huh? And that's an aftermarket uh, carb setup, you said? No, this, this, uh, this just before, I think, 71, they did electronic fuel injection. Okay, yeah. Giant, big cluster of wires for what it was like probably similar to k jetronic or something yeah that it was some Bosch. crazy yeah yeah, yeah was total sure. efi it was they have these little spots are like pretty pretty much uh an injector would be directly oh, okay port injector yep. almost totally yeah yeah right on the head. look at this intake setup that's interesting they kind of pulled air from right mm -hmm. here and there's a little yeah. thermostatic valve that 
pulls uh, hotter, right, cold. Yeah, yeah, it's pretty weird how it works. And actually, the I always say this: um, the reason some like the turbo models, like just the normal 740 turbo, I just take it all out. A lot of them, yeah, a lot of them have piston slap, mm -hmm. and it's because it fails in the hot air position. Oh. So it just only pulls in hot air. Yeah. So I don't, yeah, it's the first thing you do when you get a 740 turbo. You want to rip that out, mm -hmm. <laughs> or any 740 that has it. I think I have a head and stuff back here. Yeah. Oh that's, wow! Look at that. So that's the actual EFI. Oh, okay, yeah. See how those that's actually a pretty like decent flowing intake, it looks mm -hmm. like with the plenum and everything. And then there's the brain. That's pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> Look at that. Eh? You adjust the I think this adjusts the mixture. Yeah, okay, yeah, yep. There's no O2 sensor mass. It's just crazy. Pretty basic. Cool. Alright, so uh what's the deal with this car here? It, uh, it was I mean all the two forties as far as I naturally know. Aspirated naturally diesel. aspirated diesel. Yeah. And then I pretty much um there's a guy up at the, on the peninsula that would uh, make oil pans. So I got a oil pan that's because a 740 pan you cannot fit. They won't clear. I see. So yeah. he takes the 240 uh, diesel pan, cuts out a little notch for the oil drain. Cool. The turbo. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. Um, so the oil pan he makes the oil drain location in it for you. Mm -hmm. Sweet. Yeah, yeah. And, and uh, that's mainly just for guys wanting to turbo convert their uh, diesel yep, 240. Yep. Sweet, yeah, it's, yeah. It's cool. just a better alternative than drilling a hole and you know, kind for of sure. pipe thread something. It's, yep. It's all the factory stuff. And this is non intercooled, so that's actually the factory turbo manifold, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Cool. And then uh, this one. You know what? Actually, this turbo almost looks like the T3s that the 740 turbos came with. I wonder oh, what kind of turbo yeah. that is. It's the, really the wastegate's similar. pretty goofy on these ones. Oh it's yeah. Is this a fa this is a factory turbo? Uh, this yep. turbo is yes. Yeah, so yeah, yeah cool. Factory, yep. yeah. yeah, interesting. The really the only difference I guess between the NAs and the really the turbo motors I think is just uh, jet cooling on the pistons. Oh really? Yeah. yeah I don't yeah. think there's really other differences. Other than the yeah the motors pretty They're much the same though. They're still pretty damn strong. Yeah. I mean. Other than I guess like you got to know a couple of things about them right like the the heads warp I guess when you overheat them. They're very sensitive. They yeah. crack. That's the thing. Crack. Cracks. I see. So I got a head. Uh, uh, KMC or some expensive head yep. in the the injector cups are cracking everywhere. Oh well, damn! It's, it's real bad. And the camshaft snap, I heard. Eventually, oh, I broke, when they warp too much, yeah. I broke a camshaft of uh, literally four different pieces. Really? Hey, yeah, yeah, yeah. I guess because they're so long, and once they warp, then like it's mm -hmm. kind of it's hard for them to keep up with it. Yeah, they're, it's weird. There's a timing belt back here. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Interesting, eh? And one up front. One for the injection pump, one for the motor. Pretty goofy. Cool. And actually, this is a VE pump, I believe. So yep. this is the same as, uh, same like, as a VE Cummins. Yep. Yeah, yeah, just totally. Spins, uh, the, I guess the reverse rotation, yeah, yeah. they spin back. So it's probably the power screw you can just turn up the same oh, way, Oh, yeah, right? it's right there. I've, been, I've already tampered with there it. There you go. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> yep. That's awesome. Here, let's take a little walk around this car. It looks like you got bigger tires on it. Yeah, I did bigger tires, overload springs in the rear. I mean, it's so it's kind of like an adventure wagon, kind of. Yeah. Sweet. It's yeah. miles and not very easy ones on it. But. 233? Yep. Yeah, that's not too bad. I drove it at the Arizona and back. So this was a factory, yeah, it's got the rear leather seat in it, M46. And the rear facing seat I had to find. Oh, cool. It was factory rear facing seat car, so. Diesel yeah. GL. Yeah, I put, I put the GL on there. I love stacking uh, trim levels. <laughs> yeah, yep. Yeah. But yeah, it's. I mean, it's, it's old and aged. Yeah, this one's it's, cool. I've hauled a lot of engines in the back of this thing. No doubt. But yeah, there's the back seat. Kind of neat. That's right. That's that's like sort of common in the 740s. Not super common, but it's probably even harder to find in the 240s. I'd say. Oh yes. Yeah. 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 Mm, I did the what's that called? The Euro. I you guys, think, if you're uh, not uh, informed, uh, do, do not be informed by the media. Yeah. Because that's the wrong information. <laughs> um, all right, so. <laughs> Third, third Volvo in uh, Turner's collection here. Yeah, Ooh, okay, this. we got it's, some spice in this one. It's a very old. I mean, this is done forever ago. And so this is uh, like a late '70s 240 or is it '80 or something? 82. 82. Okay, just, yeah, yeah. I just like these old style. Yeah, the dual, the dual uh, rounds. Mm -hmm. That's the most rare 240 front end, I think. <clears throat> so um, this one is a also a turbo converted NA. Yep. Cool. Yep. Yeah, yeah. So the same idea as that car then. Pretty much, yep. yeah. But and just this one, you actually went a little farther. You did an intercooler and stuff. Yeah, and this yeah. is the NA, uh, NA manifold. Intake, yeah. And I kept on blowing off the back. Oh yeah, so yeah. Because <laughs> normally it's under vacuum. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So I kept on blowing that thing off. So I, this is a brake fluid. Nice. It fits nice, perfect okay. over that. Like sweet. Perfect. <laughs> so yeah, That's I have awesome. a, I do have an issue. So you just ran an intercooler that had the outlet on the same side, I mm -hmm. guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Sweet. 
Um, and this one's a turbo upgraded? Yeah, this is some eBay. Yeah. You yeah. said HX30 or something like that? I think so. Something, yeah, yeah. Something looks, in that realm. Something like that, yeah. Um, I almost thought about, because there's the late the late model diesels had the EGR. Yep. So that's almost a perfect spot for a freaking external wastegate. External wastegate, right? yeah, <laughs> no need. doubt, no doubt. Yeah, yeah, that would be really cool, actually. But, so yeah. is this one is this one much faster than this one? Oh yeah, it's, this okay. one actually, I mean they're they're quick. Yeah, it gets up and goes a lot better. Yeah, that yeah. Thing. Intercooler, you can probably turn the the fuel up more oh, without yeah. melting think, it down. Shoot, I've had it like forty pounds of boost. Holy shit, eh? Yeah, yeah that's got, pretty good. Like crazy, it's way too much. But yeah, that one's probably like twenty five max or something like twenty. Yeah, this thing is super cool. So same thing, M forty six transmission, I guess. Yep. Yeah. Uh, Overdrive actually still works on the button. I had the nice. few times. Nice. Sweet. But it's, it's uh, pushing, you know, getting high. It's up in the mileage. <laughs> yeah. Um, I feel like if you, like, almost every single Volvo these days is over 200 miles. Yeah. At least. Turbo diesel. So yeah. that's from a 240 turbo. Mm -hmm. uh, 242 turbo. And then, yep. and then that's just a factory diesel one, right? Yep. Yeah, sweet. Look at that exhaust, though. That's so <laughs> sick. It's like a truck. <laughs> oh, the exhaust in the wagon's pretty neat. Uh, it's pretty it's kind of comes out the factory location it oh sweet okay yeah 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 over the axle three inch all the way mm -hmm. right on and so this car here's like this is probably gonna be my favorite because i'm a big 740 guy so um wow look at this thing eh? <laughs> i would add this to my collection <laughs> this thing is sweet is. man yeah so what year is this 84 yeah wow it's beautiful shape for an 84 one of the first of the 760 because it was 83 was the first year of the mm -hmm. 7 series Volvos. They, one, there was a, they did a lot of weird stuff in the 83. They, oh, they, yeah, they did. And they changed it like when they went to the normal 740s in the mid 80s. But yeah, the 83s had a lot of specific weird, things. Weird yeah, things. totally. The engine's a little bit cleaner. I mean, it's an oil mess. It's, I mean, it's got a yeah, lot of Yeah, let's check this thing out. Oh, it's dirty. Oh, this is embarrassing, but yeah, it's dirty. Oh, sorry. The seats are actually, the leather's good. Like this car normally. Dude, this is so cool. The guy yeah. I got this car from actually took very, like meticulous, what about clean, like keeping it clean. Yeah, but yeah, totally. It's a mess, I'm sorry. No, that's all right, that's all right. <laughs> you can clean it up before someone comes to check it out. Oh yeah, totally. <laughs> yeah, but man, I mean, this is so cool. Just uh, like, it has the uh, the little coin tray there. Yeah, that's I've a real piece. That a wrecking yard. Nice, yeah. yeah. And is this a, this is aftermarket. The, the dash cover? The dash cover? I, I, yeah. Because there's a Volvo D24T on there. That's crazy. Normally these dashes are, you know, pretty Completely cracked up. Completely cracked up, yeah. The gauge clusters on these are a little different. So in, uh, it's got the full clock. He had someone uh, add a bunch of stuff. To so this one. is this thing only has 88,000 miles on it. Mm -hmm. That's incredible. Holy crap. You know, actually is really interesting to me is that these engines rev, uh, they rev pretty high for mm -hmm. a diesel engine from oh, the factory. Oh, I know. I think yeah. it's 55. 55. Like, that's pretty, that's quite a bit. Okay. <laughs> Damn, it's sweet. Okay, mess. here we go. So this is uh, as well an NA manifold. Mm -hmm. It looks so much different in the 740. It's got so much more room here. Oh, I know. The, yeah, yeah, the engine's actually more, you know, straight up yeah, and down. Yeah, straight up and down. It's kind of tilt. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, yeah. Um, so NA manifold, and then this is just capped off shut, here. Welded yeah. shut properly. Cool. It's, um, it's kind of same sort of turbo. What do you got going on it here? It is uh, whole. I think it is a whole set. Yeah, it is a whole set. Yeah. HX, HX30. Oh, very very cool. Go. Yeah, yeah. It it's does, got an HX30 on it. That's it does boost up fairly decent. Yeah. I guess some people say it's a little bit too much for one of these, but I mean, eh. it's okay. Yeah. They, I, they like too on. big? Yeah, I don't yeah, know. Like, depends. If you're going to be revving it up that yeah, high, it's I probably mean, pretty it's, good. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so this is your uh, PCV system. <laughs> yeah. Go into the intake there. Yeah. that's. It. I've always wondered about that on my Cummins because I have like the valve cover breather. And uh, I was like, ah, oh, it'd be cool to have it under vacuum. But then I was like, what if it like pulls oil <laughs> and into my intake? I, it's this thing's got so much blow by. Yeah, fair enough. It tired, needs that then. It's yeah. a tired motor. Yeah, if I were to vent it on the ground, it would oh, just man, fucking you would puke smell out. It. Yeah, yeah, it's for a sure. tired motor. But for sure. I have. But I bet you tons. it still runs pretty good though. Right? Yeah, 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 it runs all right. The yeah. injection pumps, uh, it's leaking diesel. I'm sure it gets air intrusions. Fair enough. Yeah. But yeah. Um, It'll, it'll run. Oh man, that's a, a really cool car. These are this is a rare car, guys. So if you're from like Europe and you're watching this, um, you guys did have a lot of turbo diesels. I know I've seen a lot over there, but in North America, they're super hard to come by. Uh, so I'm like really amazed right now because um, a running one, a running one that's in good shape, and you know it's an '84. It's super old school. Um, really, really cool. This is a really cool car for sure. And that spoiler too. That's a rare piece too. Yeah, someone had yeah. to source that out. And then the, even that whole back piece, that back insert. The, yeah, that's the, the, the heck blend it's called. Yeah, heck blend. 
pretty neat. Yeah, that's really cool. And even like this, uh, even even these badges are rare, you know? Oh, I know. Turbo diesel. Yeah. And it's, just, it's still pretty clean. It's oh, I like the exhaust on this one too. There she goes. <laughs> cool. I mean, it started up alright, but once it gets cold, it's probably pretty tough. Oh, yeah. yeah. Look at this cloud, guys. <laughs> yeah, she doesn't run too, too bad. <laughs> Almost got fucking engulfed by a cloud. That sounds so good, dude. That's the best sound ever. That's so sick. <laughs> it sounds like a Cummins, like a little Cummins. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, the turbo's pretty decent on this one. That's so sick, man. You can really hear it when you're going yeah, to Yeah, totally. And <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they love, they literally live on Governor. That one's so good. Sick, man. It's gotta be the best sounding engine ever. <laughs> Alright guys, well shout out to Turner here for uh, showing me his collection. Pretty darn cool. I'm gonna grab this aluminum hood off of him and then I'm gonna keep on going on my journey. So uh, yeah, it's been a pretty fun day so far.